we're, we're live. Yeah, we're live. So, hey, um, let me tell you what happened about 45 minutes ago when I was in my bed. I got a text message from Mike Young. Hey, what are you doing? I'm like, sleeping. <laughs> hey, uh, we're coming through Atlanta. You want to have breakfast? Yes. <laughs> so here we are. I text Gus. I'm like, don't be jealous. You're probably in bed. And Mike and his guys are coming over for breakfast. <laughs> well, I got to take Gus. like, I got to take my son or whatever. I'm like, okay, yeah, you, you do that. You take your son. Meanwhile, look who's here at breakfast. I don't know where his son is. But anyway, we're having a storytelling with Mike at breakfast. Yeah. So we had to bring you guys in. Yeah, let's set this up right here, too. It's been like one cool story after another. So yeah. let it roll, let's man. see if we can... Set this up here, so make it something. Is that good frame? Good morning. Yeah. All right. All right. Breakfast so, with Mike. Breakfast with Mike. This so we awesome. were we were we were working in that cenote, and we were filming uh, the uh, Crocodrilo Under the Jungle documentary. We had these massive video lights, but the battery packs would plug in, and so we built a little scooter that would run on those battery packs. So on the days we weren't filming, we'd have a scooter because we're getting, we have probably 20,000 feet of surveyed passage in there, but it's a long swim to the back. Did you guys make those scooters, by the way? It looked like PVC pipes with an engine. Yeah, it was an engine and, and then some buoyant, some <laughs> pipe for buoyancy to make it neutral. So you guys made it? Yeah. And they plug into the video light batteries and, and away we go. Strong. They weren't really fast. They do about 100 feet per minute, but I mean, you couldn't stop them. And so, yeah, so we, we, we made this leash to where like four of us could get on this leash and it'd pull all of us to the back. And when we'd get to our different areas, we'd split up and go work and then we'd come back to the scooter to come out. And uh, so about 200 feet in, there's this area where there's this, a crack in the floor that goes down about 10 feet, but it's really narrow. Everybody's gotta do all their checks and everything, you know. So we finally get, they give me the okay to go. So I hit the trigger, I take off. We go, we go about 150 feet or so, and then there's a hard uh, uh, left-hand turn. I made the corner and I saw. So, yeah, I, I didn't realize. So, so the one guy right behind me, he saw yeah, they're done. what's gonna happen. And so he started kicking as fast as he could, right? So he made it around the corner, but the next one, he never saw it coming. He slammed into the wall. Okay, so. I didn't know what was happening because I made it about 20 feet past the corner and all of a sudden it slammed me down that crack. Okay, it was like, and, and the trigger was, I mean, the scooter was still on. It blew that stuff everywhere. I couldn't figure out which way was up or what was going on, you know. I finally come crawling up out of that crack, you know, and I'm like, what the heck's going on, guys, you know. And of course, I'm faced with all these bad people because I ran them into the wall, you know. <laughs> I would have loved to have been on that, though. So, right. so the next corner, we get up to the next corner. I was like, stop, everybody swims all the way around. You guys okay? Yeah, we're okay. Okay, go. <laughs> that is learning. He's got, like, he's got like hundreds of these. I but, mean, we just heard about another one where he sunk with an airplane. Yeah, yeah, crashed, crashed an airplane one day. Airplane crashed an airplane and underwater. Underwater went down with it. No, they didn't so, realize there was a mountain. Right? We were pulling, towing it across the lake. And it was running about 60 feet deep, and the guys on the sur on the boat didn't realize there was a mountain range going through there. So but you have to tell people you were inside the plane. Yeah, I was in the plane. I was right. Well, I had a I had a thing going where whenever we would move uh, something to the scuba park, I would like it's a boat or something that had been sunk. I would ride in it. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, and so when we put the plane in, we're like, well, you got to ride in that too, right? <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, yeah. Until 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 we <laughs> crashed it. Uh, but then there was another one. We found an old Ranger bass boat, and there's a lot of flotation in those things. And ev evidently, they had sunk it for the insurance because it was full of rocks. And so we went over there, and we started pulling all these rocks out. And all of a sudden, it flipped over and went to the surface. So, so it's sitting on the surface upside down, and it's flat bottom. And so we hooked onto it and started towing it. And they're like, you're going to ride this one too? You know, even though it's not underwater. And I'm like, well, yeah, I might as well. <laughs> so I was standing up on it, you know. And so we take off and, and it started planing underwater instead of, okay. And so it got to where there's like three inches of water going across the boat. 
And so we go by this campground and we're only going like two miles an hour, you know? We go by the campground and I'm standing like 50 feet behind the, <laughs> the boat, just standing out in, on the water and all the people in the campground, yeah. <laughs> all the people in the campground just walking, oh, yeah. walking on water out there. <laughs> That's awesome. Do people have questions for Mike or anything? Yeah, guys, if you uh, feel free to fire out your questions. Let me just hold this for a second so I can, um, right, can here, let Gus scroll right. for the questions. There are some yeah, I'll, questions. I'll flip the camera. There sure were. So I, they can see you guys. I think, by the way, your wife and your dad called during well, the live stream. So that's, they're, they're, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I should have said. Oh, thank you for the super chat, whoever that was. Probably like, Gus, are not you supposed to be taking our son somewhere right now? Well... <laughs> Uh, Isaac is asking, um, how do you become neutrally buoyant without lots and lots and lots of weights? He's probably a new diver. Yeah, I mean, um, in general, there's what we call a weight check. So for all new divers, we teach a skill called a weight check. It's going to be dependent upon what you're wearing, your thermal protection, and your gear. And we do a certain procedure to determine what's the right amount of weight so that basically most of your control of your buoyancy is through your breathing if you're on open circuit rather than necessarily having to add so much air inside your VC. So that's one of the things that we teach you when you learn to become certified to dive is how to figure out your proper weighting. It's actually a very good question. Yep. Let's see. How long has Mike been diving? How do you get started? Well, that's an interesting story. <laughs> of course, I was, I was course. living in Africa. Obviously. In, uh, the Kalahari Desert. <laughs> and uh, there was a scuba club there, and a friend of mine was in the scuba club, and he asked me one day if he wanted to certify. And so we went over to, uh, to uh, Bundercut, which is, actually has a cavern. It's a big sinkhole that, that is a cavern. And uh, that's where I got my open water certification. Back nice. In How about that? Living in Africa? <laughs> Living the in dream? Africa, mine was in <laughs> Fort Lauderdale. I mean, if you're going to learn how to scuba dive, why not in the desert? Right? In the Obviously. <laughs> Firefly, thank you for the super chat as well. How many hours underwater does Mike have at this point? All of the hours. I, I quit logging. <laughs> Um, let's see. Where are you guys? What state? We're in Georgia. What's Mike's favorite breakfast cereal? Helen cereal? is asking. Yeah. Uh, Fruity Pebbles with marshmallows. Fruity Pebbles with marshmallows because he's badass like that. Welcome, Fruity Pebbles. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> There's a run on Fruity yeah. Pebbles. Uh, do you have to own your own gear to be able to get certified? Not really. Uh, if you're getting open water certified they typically include the gear rental as part of the class. But you should own your gear if you're gonna be a diver. It's better to dive with your own gear. Uh, people are saying they love Fruity Pebbles. There you go. They're jumping on the Fruity Pebble bandwagon. Well, tomorrow though, there won't be any Fruity Pebbles tomorrow. Isaac is asking, would you guys come to Australia to dive? Yes, I have. Um, and it was beautiful and Yes, because all you have to say is, would you come to X to dive? Yes. <laughs> yep. The answer is yes. <laughs> uh, all right, so any more stories, Mike, uh, while we wait for more questions? Team Fruity Pebbles, somebody said. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Could be a shirt. I'm from coastal Georgia and looking to get into dive in any places you guys recommend to get certified. Yeah, know, if you, um, when people ask that, the easiest way is to send us an email, info at divetalk.com, yeah. and then we'll offline Offer. give you suggestions always. Yeah, We'll have some questions for you, and then we can help you from there. Yeah. Let's see. Somebody asked something else. I really want to see my posters. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Oh, I do have a kiss shirt. Oh, there you go. Everybody has a kiss. That's the what? The Mike kiss shirt. Oh. Oh, yeah, don't follow me. I do the interest. <laughs> That's right. Oh, here comes our breakfast. They're going to see this. Okay. This is legit. A lot of French toast coming to this table. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Oh my god, look at that thing. Breakfast of Champions. Thank you, X Benedict. That's legit. Just for clarification, that is turkey, chicken, pork. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any of you guys have been diving in Scotland? They're asking. No. Scotland, sounds anyone? Cold. Sounds cold. I haven't. So there's a there's at the end of World War One. They sent the German Navy to Scapa Flow, and they they were holding them there. And then I guess the Germans got tired of waiting, and so they scuttled all their ships. And so that's an excellent place for us to go. Oh, Scapa I guess. Flow. It looks like we'll be. Okay, I guess we're gonna be diving in Scotland. Yeah, I guess so. Like. <laughs> Where are you supposed to go? Right? I was supposed to go in August, but the travel restrictions. All right, so I guess we should probably focus on eating because these guys have to head out. Um, they were just going by. If you missed the story earlier on, basically about an hour ago, they. Mike texted us and said, I'm going through town. You guys want to meet for breakfast? Yeah, we'll be back. Gus Here we and are. I will be, Gus and I will be back on live at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yep. At, uh, at Sea Ventures here in Atlanta. Yeah. They're having a big event. That's, they have it every year. And we're going to bring out all the Kiss Rebreathers on the Ramp of Spirit and the Sidewinder, the DPV, walk around, and we're going to have fun. So come back at 2 o'clock. Yep. We'll see you in less than five hours, guys. Thank you all.